Once the Prophet was walking in the streets of Medina and he saw a person in the distance, a Bedouin, taking a ghusl without any clothes on in the public. And this was something the Bedouins did. The Prophet walked to the masjid and he stood on the mimbar and he gave a, a mini khutbah. And by the way, the Prophet would often give the maw'idah or the khatira from the mimbar. That was the default, not just the khutbah. He would stand and he would give what we give the khatira here. Uh, he would give it on his, on his mimbar. And he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيِّيٌ سِتِّيرٌ يُحِبُّ السَّتْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shy, hayi, and sitir. He loves to cover. Yuhibbu satr. He loves to cover. So when one of you takes a ghusl, fal yastatir. Let him cover himself. This hadith teaches us, it is the only hadith in which one of the names of Allah occurs. And that is as sitir. This name is not found in the Quran. There are a number of names that are found only in the hadith. And this is one of those names of Allah that is found in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As-sitir, from the root satara. And satara means to cover up. Satara means to envelope so that you don't see. And therefore we call a curtain sitar, because it covers up. Okay, we call a curtain sitar, because it's covering what is behind it. As-sitir ala wazni fi'il, it means the one who covers up regardless of how large what is underneath it needs to be covered. So as-sitir, the one who covers no matter how large the covering, Allah's cover can encompass it. By the way, the name of Allah, the technical name is as-sitir. Uh, some of our brethren, they say, ya satir. And this is not wrong, it's not incorrect, but it is not correct either. The name of Allah is sitir. And also some brothers say Sattar. So Abdul Sattar is a common name in some lands. And again, it's not wrong. But the better version or the more accurate version is Sittir. And this is what is found in the hadith. So in today's short khatar, want to extract some benefits from this name of Allah Azza wa Jal. What does a Sittir mean? A Sittir is the name of Allah that indicates that Allah's nature and Allah Azza wa Jal's name and Allah's action is an action of covering the faults of those whom he loves. Allah covers the faults of his beloved. Allah protects other people from seeing the faults of those whom he loves. So Allah himself is a sitir, and he loves sitir, and he commands sitir, and he practices sitir. All of this is encompassed in the name of Allah, a sitir. There are many types of sitir. We'll go over three or four of them as time permits. The first type of sitr is mentioned in this hadith. And that is the physical satr, the covering of one's own aura. And this is the most obvious. Allah wants us to cover. And Allah does not love fahisha. He does not love nakedness and nudity in public. It is not uh, of the commandments of Allah. As Allah says in the Quran, that when the Quraysh said that Allah commanded us to do tawaf without clothes, Allah says, no, inna Allah la ya'muru bil fahsha. And the hadith of, uh, or the, the verse of, Adam alayhi salam, yeah, uh, uh, that Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ قَدْ أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ لِبَاسًا يُوَارِي سَوْآتِكُمْ وَرِيشًا O children of Adam, we have sent down clothes unto you. Allah did not create us with clothes. We are born without clothes. Where did clothes come from? How did they get here? قَدْ أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ لِبَاسًا our mother and father, according to our tradition, did not come down naked. Yes, in Jannah, what happened, happened. But when they came down to earth, they were dressed, they were clothed. So Allah sent our parents down wearing the garments that they wore. Allah sent them down wanting to teach them. And then Allah says, Ya Bani Adam, O children of Adam, we have sent down clothes. We taught you and we ingrained in you that you should be wearing clothes. What, what is the purpose of clothes? Because It covers your aura and warisha. It is a decoration for you. So this is the first satr. And it is mentioned in the hadith that the Prophet said, Allah is satir, he loves satr. So when one of you takes a bath, don't do it in public, do it in private. This is the first meaning of satr. The second connotation of satr, is to cover and conceal one's own faults from other people. It is a matter of haya 
and a matter of belief in Allah that we do not want to publicize our own sins. And this is something that some people misunderstand. They say, you know what? If I'm going to do a sin, everybody should know about it. On the contrary, don't do a sin. But if you're going to do a sin, do not publicize it. Keep it between you and Allah because Allah Azza wa Jal is sitir and He loves satir. This is something explicitly mentioned in a hadith in Abu Dawood. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, O oh believers, Ya Ma'ashar al Muslimin, avoid these qadurat, these disgusting deeds. Avoid doing the sins. But whoever amongst you has done one, فَلْيَسْتَتِرْ بِسَتِرِ اللَّهِ This is hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you've done it, then do cover yourself with the covering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he told us, don't do sins. But if you've done one, don't go tell people about it. Cover with the covering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you tell other people, then our Prophet ﷺ said, كُلُّ أُمَّةِ مُعَافٍ إِلَّا الْمُجَاهِرُونَ All of my ummah shall be forgiven except those who publicize. The Sahaba said, what do you mean those who publicized? So the Prophet ﷺ said, a man commits a sin in the middle of the night and Allah has given satr to him. Then the next day he goes and he says, hey so and so, do you know what I did last night? I did this and this. And he tells them and he destroys the satr of Allah. Allah has at least covered your sin. Have enough haya and shame that you don't take that satr away. And the hadith in Bukhari, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O Messenger of Allah, I have committed a crime and I have hugged and kissed a lady that I should not have done. So enact the hudud on me. That's all he did. He hugged and he didn't go all the way. He hugged and kissed. Umar ibn Khattab said, Ya hadha. Oh, so and so, wayhak, woe to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sataraka bi sitrihi. Allah covered his sitr upon you. Why did you have to come and break that sitr? Why did you have to come and tell us in public, I did such and such? You did something, you don't have to come and tell us, it's something private. So this shows us if you do a sin that is private between you and Allah, we're not talking about a sin that is dhulm unto other people, that's a separate category, we're going to come to that. A private sin, you don't boast about it, you don't go and publicize it, you don't go and tell other people. It is Allah's nature, a sitir, He wants sins to be private, He doesn't want you to commit sin. But if a sin has occurred, then between private and public, you choose private. This is the second meaning of sitir. And the third meaning of sitir, or the third connotation, is if you see another person commit a sin, that is a private sin between him and Allah. It does not involve the hukuk of the ibad. It does not involve the hukuk of the community. If you see a person committing a sin that is private, smoking, drinking, you know, consensual thing that might happen between two people. If you see that, then you give them nasiha privately. You tell them to fear Allah privately. But unless the community Unity is involved unless the hukuk of innocent people are involved because obviously by the way if somebody is stealing money and he's going to keep on doing that now that's a separate thing you know if somebody did something that is a crime against humanity that's a separate thing we're talking about a private sin a slip up that is between a person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nobody else is affected the community doesn't need to know our prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said Man satara ala akhihi muslim Whoever covers the faults of his Muslim brother, satara, whoever covers the faults of his Muslim brother in this world, Allah Azza wa Jal will cover his faults on the day of judgment. This is an authentic hadith which contradicts completely the culture we live in right now. This culture that we live in, it loves gossip. And it loves spreading innuendos and drama. You don't need to subscribe to HBO and the drama channels. Facebook and your social media will tell you all you need to know. So and so did this. You know the latest thing. A'udhu billah. And there are especially in this culture, news channels and specific programs dedicated to spread gossip and innuendo. And unfortunately, our communities, our Muslim communities have absorbed this culture. Ya khi, it is nobody's business if somebody commits a sin that is private between him and Allah or her and Allah. And if you happen to find out about it, it's not your business to go tell other people. Yes, you go to that person. Yes, you advise that person directly. Yes, you try to correct it within, you know, private between you and him. But unless it involves the hukuk of others, you are not 
forget obliged. You are sinful in most times for spreading. And that's why Allah says, الْفَاحِشَ Those who want fahisha to spread. And in the hadith or the qissa of the slander of Aisha, what did we learn from that slander story? Be quiet. Don't spread slander. Don't spread gossip. You just stop. Don't spread it. تَلَقَّوْنَهُ بِأَلْسِنَتِكُمْ So our sharia aims to cover up. Why, by the way? Why? Somebody can say, but I need to know the crimes of so-and-so. And the response is, why? Why do you need to know? Because it is possible that the crimes of so-and-so might indeed be there, but then his good will outweigh that bad. And by publicizing the bad, you have minimized his good. You have made tawbah difficult for that person. Also, when you constantly publicize evil, you desensitize evil in the eyes of the masses. So, in a society where hardly anybody drinks, and you come across somebody drinking, then you start spreading, oh, so-and-so is drinking, so-and-so is drinking, and 5, 10, 15 people, then shaitan's gonna come and say, you know what, everybody's drinking, let me drink as well. You shall incentivize by spreading fahisha. The goal should be to minimize, don't speak about it publicly.